Holly, hello, I'm Marie Fashionista Sherry, and welcome to another delightful DIY in my 12 Days of Thrift Mas. Still not quite there. By, by the end of this, you know, special little series, I'll, I'll have it. I'll be on tune, finally. Let's, fingers crossed that that's gonna happen. Anyway, so today, I thought I would share with you how I am going to be creating something that my kiddo has desperately wanted for more than a couple of months now, but it's just so expensive, I just can't afford to get it. So we're gonna make it. And um, that is a pair of gothic punky cargo pants. Now, I was at the thrift shop and I found these boys cargo pants for a mere three dollars and 49 cents and i thought you know what i can transform these into exactly what she wants using bits i already have around my house so let's go do that right now for this awesome personalized pants refashion you'll need your cargo pants, of course, plus a whole bunch of stuff from your stash. Now, I grabbed my kind of little bucket of buckles and clips here, of uh, some ribbons that I've been saving. This is actually a strap from a purse, and I saved it clearly, not because of this, but because of the chains, and I think these are going to make a very cool and punky addition to these pants once they're all done. Plus, I also found some leopard print faux fur in my stash, so we'll see if we're going to use that or not. And, of course, my patches, my basket of patches we need, but we're going to start with recoloring these pants. And I thought I had some black fabric dye in my stash, but I do not. Instead, I'm going to do purple and navy blue, and we'll see how dark it's going to come out. <laughs> So before I dye these, I thought, oh, I'll just pull this lace out and it's sewn in. But when I pulled it, I kind of thought, mm, I wonder if it's actually stitched here where the tag used to be. Uh, so I'm just going to remove this tag remnant here and the thread and hopefully I'll be able to get those laces out then. Okay, so I managed to remove all of those little tag remnants without doing too much, too much damage or without doing any damage actually, <laughs> great, to the fabric. Now here comes the moment of truth, let's pull and see. Oh, is it coming? Oh, it is! Yay! Okay, great. Now we got the lace out. Now let's go dye it. So I have my gloves on, I have some salt, I have my dye packets, and I have my stirrer. Plus, I am filling my dye sink with hot water. You can, of course, use whatever kind of container that you have, a plastic one, a big pot on the stove. It's all up to you and what you have and what you're most comfortable with. So I have my dye in now, and I am just stirring it in as best I can. You kind of got to feel for the grittiness until that disappears. I always add in about a cup of salt and then stir that in really well because it does seem to help set the dye. I'm not sure of the science behind it, but it actually seems to work. Okay, now I am slowly and carefully going to evenly lower my cargo pants into the dye bath and make sure that every single part of them gets some dye on them. This really looks like it's going to take the dye well, and so I'm just going to lower them in again and then come back every hour or so to check on it. And then once I'm satisfied with the color, I shall just launder as usual. So the pants are totally dyed, totally laundered, and la la, do they not look fantastic? This color is so perfect. It's like a really, really deep lilac, which is fantastic. And one of her favorite colors. So perfect, perfect result. Now, because this stitching actually didn't dye, because it's obviously a polyester thread, which is fine, because I think this matches really well with the stitching. So the very first thing I'm going to do for embellishing these is add some cool leopard to the cuffs. So I'm just going to measure this and go quickly stitch it on. 
This came out so super cute and so much better than I thought it would. Now let's move on and add some patches. Okay, so these are the patches that she chose from my stash. And um, yeah, this one, of course, is, is the fan favorite here. <laughs> it's just so adorably awesome. <laughs> But I'm really not sure where I should put them because the pockets can't really have patches because they, um, you know, can puff out here. So I don't want to put a patch on and then it's just going to kind of pop off. Um, let's see, maybe here can we put something like that? Would that look good? And... Maybe this one on the other side. I'm not sure if I want to put them going down the legs or where I want to put them. Let's, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Okay, I think I have them positioned pretty good here on one leg. Now, when I am first ironing on my patches, I always like to put a towel down, especially if I'm not using my ironing board, which I'm not because I'm filming this. <laughs> now, then I arrange my patches in the position I would like them, and then I have my trusty old cotton cloth here that I just lay over the top of the patches, and that's just to protect them from the high heat of the iron. Right, and then I just push really really hard and go over and over and over the patches okay i think that should just about do it so we're gonna peel that off and i always like to go and just check that all of the edges are really stuck down and i will be going and either hand or machine stitching these down as well just for some extra security because after washing them a couple times they will start to lift and I don't want that to happen so I'm probably just going to hand stitch all the way around the outside edges. Okay so apparently these kind of gothic punky cargo pants have stuff hanging off them. This is like the big attraction <laughs> is to have stuff hanging off your pants. So I found these uh, plastic buckles, which, you know, should be washable in my buckles and clips little bin I have here. And they're colorful, which I think is nice to have instead of just black, right? And um, then I found these black ribbon pieces in my little ribbon bin. So I'm trying to think where should I attach these? Like put one side maybe here and then the other side around the other side and then the ribbon is just kind of hanging there. Um, I'm not really sure, but I think we're going to give that a try. And let's maybe do the bigger ones and the blue and purple. Yeah, blue and purple and do two of them on one side. That looks kind of cool, doesn't it? I think it does. Yeah. Okay. Let's give that a shot. <laughs> so this is what I ended up doing with those buckles. I kind of attached it here <laughs> with some rickrack trim on either side and they do actually open. So if she wants to hang some light stuff off of there, she can. Then I just grabbed a scrap and put it in a little colorful frame. <laughs> Um, something I actually remembered that uh, we Gen Xers were fond of doing to punkify our outfits was to simply add some safety pins and uh, chains. So that's what I did. It's super easy to remove. I just, you know, put some chain on either end and then when it comes time to wash it, I can just take it off. And I found this scrap in my stash which had a buttonhole on one end. So I just hand stitched it to the pocket flap with some visible stitching to make it a little bit more punky, I guess. And then added this uh, little keychain thingy on the end of it, which again is removable. And let's move to the other side now. So on this side, I decided to add this cute little pug to the end of this safety pin. There's another safety pin with chain here. And I did a grommet in the corner of this pocket. Now, if you're not sure how to to install grommets, I will link below to my step-by-step -step tutorial over on my blog. I then just grabbed uh, one of these little clip 
what is this called? I can't remember, sorry. And <laughs> clipped it on here. And again, this is easily removable when it comes time for washing. But do you remember that belt chain that I had? This one here, I chopped it off of one end and then I added it to this clip and it is perfect and she can in fact clip anything she wants to the end here because this is super sturdy. And last but certainly not least I replaced the old tie that was in there with this pretty hot pink satin one. <laughs> and let's have a look starting from the top and scrolling down how totally punkified are these. I am in love with these and I wish they were actually my size. <laughs> like, I mean, how absolutely fabulous did these come out? I really, really love the cuffs. I mean, it's just absolutely perfect and I truly do wish they were in my size, but I think I'm going to have to thrift a pair of cargo pants and recreate all of this in, you know, a pair that actually fit me. And um, yeah, I'm sure she's going to love these when she opens them on Christmas morning. So, you know, fingers crossed, but I think I did a pretty good job. Let me know down below what you think. And if you actually do this kind of stuff yourself, do you try to recreate items, you know, that your kids want, family members, friends, and you know, gift it to them? I want to know. I can't be the only one who does this, right? <laughs> Anyway, speaking of gifts, as I keep saying, please do check out my nifty, thrifty DIY gifts e-course, as well as my Refashioning 101 e-courses. They are super duper sale right now for the holidays, and there are just so many tips, tricks, tutorials, everything you could possibly need is in those two courses. And um, yeah, until tomorrow, <laughs> stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya on the zig zag. So awesome! <laughs> this is Confessions of a Refashionista.